I think it's a state of mind, Wayne. I think it's a state of mind and it's a generational thing. I think the, the older generations had, maybe it's because of what they've been through, world wars, etc. They've seen things that, God forbid, we will, we will hopefully never see. But they, they have a lot more respect, I think, for each other. And I'm not saying that generations of today um, in their entirety don't have that respect, but there's enough people of the generations that perhaps are a little bit more materialistic and a little bit more um, interested in their own self-well-being, whether that impacts upon other people or not. You only need to look at the news. I read something this morning about individuals living in apartments with uh, with friends and they're still going out uh, bringing people back to their apartments having parties with with no concern whatsoever about the impact that could have on on the local population quite frankly um and it, it beggars belief you know there, there are people in this country and on this in this planet that require a great deal of care at the moment you know, they're on lockdowns for, for 12 weeks. Um, my wife's father is in that position. And there are people out there still, uh, still abusing um, what they're being asked as a society to do. It's infuriating. This thing will go on a lot longer because of people like them, not because of what we are doing as individuals, but because of people like them. Mm. Rant over. <laughs> so how do we translate that then into a you know, sort of some form of action. So, so taking that idea of, okay, so there was a, maybe a more generalized lack of respect, lack of responsibility, uh, lack of appreciating uh, what we've actually got. How do we take that and translate that into an actionable step to move forward? You know, one for ourselves, and I'm not speaking specifically around COVID-19, I'm talking specifically really about our businesses. Well, one way, and I've always believed this is that people follow people who are doing things positively. If a person doing something positive or negative, people automatically follow, unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever camp you want to look at. I've always been a believer in looking on the positive side of life. And I've always thought that my positivity draws people along or hopefully has drawn people along with me. And that's what I used to write a lot about, but I haven't over the last few years, but I'm now restarting it again because I'm getting a few people coming out of the woodwork who used to follow me 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago. Uh, a couple of them were going to try and join us today, but unfortunately they can't. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, if we speak positively, if we write positive things down, if we contact our clients, you know, the three, sorry, Mark, Mark is a person. Good morning. Good morning, Amanda. Mark uh, is an accountant. So therefore... As an accountant, people are looking at what Mark says, because Mark, as far as his clients are concerned, he's the bee's knees. He's got to, he knows the legal side of the accountancy business, so therefore they look up to him. So therefore, to me, for Mark to keep his business going in the state we're in at the moment is to do what he's doing now, sit behind his dining room table and try and make contact with his clients to keep them buoyed up, positive. Mm. That's the way I look at it. Mm. Amanda's always on top of the world speaking anyway, and she's always positive. Uh, and I know Wayne is, but I also know Edward is as well. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be blunt with you, I couldn't do without Edward helping me in certain areas at all. But there we are, my rant over, but I say the glass is always half full, never half empty. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, if I can just uh, offer a little something, yeah, and uh, I think it's quite important. If we just look at something that comes from from NLP, or certainly within the training of NLP, 
we talk about the NLP communication model and essentially we get bombarded by all these bits of information every second right now as many years ago now uh mihai checks and mihai wrote a book called flow and he said we get bombarded by around about two million pieces of information per second now some scientists have said it's 11 million 20 million whatever it might be right the thing is we can't possibly take all that information in at the same time uh, we'd essentially go crazy. I mean, if you think about when Spider-Man first got bitten by the spider and he got his superpowers, right? It was like a, a, an overload. Of course, that's what would happen. And so our unconscious mind can pay attention to uh, maybe about uh, 40 million bits of per, uh, information. But our conscious mind can only pay attention to about 40 bits of information. So that is a tremendous difference and discrepancy. So what we do as people is we delete, generalize and distort that information. So as it comes into us now, I, at the moment, I'm saying comes into us through our five senses, which of course is visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory and gustatory. But it can also be and start act being activated from our thoughts. Just for the time being, if we're saying it, it, it's, it's an external stimulus, whatever that might be. Because we can't pay attention to everything as we delete, generalize, and distort, we only take in about 136, or like I said, we can pay attention to about 40 pieces of information. The thing is, those filters that come into play to help us to delete, generalize, and distort we all have them, but they are unique to each one of us. Okay, so they are our values, our beliefs. They are attitudes, the way we look at life, right? Uh, and a number of other things, our personality types, etc. The point is that we can all be experiencing the same thing. <clears throat> we can all have a totally different interpretation of what's going on. And it's almost like being in the matrix, right? Whatever is going on is, is purely our interpretation of the environment. So, you know, it's been said through recessions, many people become millionaires while other people go bankrupt. We have times like now where some people are sitting at home and all they're doing is playing TikTok or watching TV all day. You know, other people maybe are creating courses, contacting their clients, you know, whatever that might be. The thing is, like I said, it, it's just our experience. And so we've got to appreciate that each person is allowed their experience and their opinion. We just mustn't get drawn into it. So we respect that each person has their model of the world, but we don't get drawn into it. We've got to uh, essentially lead and say, look, Yes, that stuff's going on. Some of it's real. Some of it is, I mean, it's, we're not denying that the virus is, is there and it's real, but the world is not coming to an end. There's huge opportunity within these times. These times now, while we're sitting at home, while we've got that time, we, we can be creating articles, we can be reaching out to clients, we can be creating online courses, we can, uh, change the way and how we do things like a couple of weeks ago we were talking much about doing things via zoom and online platforms so each person has the interpretation but we've got the choice of what it is that we want that to be and how do we lead to help those people that actually want to change that interpretation and want to uh, move forward as well because like i said I, th I think we've got huge opportunity at the moment uh, much of what we haven't had, we've been so busy, I dare say, I'm sure each one of us, been so busy prior to all this, being busy in the business. Now is a phenomenal time to be working on the business because we're not being caught up in the daily grind, right? May I ask a question? How many of us are actually still working at the moment, albeit from home, but we're, we are carrying on from what Wayne has said, 
working on the business because this has been one of my cries for so many yeah. years there are so many business people who work in the business but don't think about getting new business in i.e working on the business can i ask that question i'm still very much working on on the business in fact there are three three partners in our practice and we have without a shadow of a doubt spoken more about how the business operates what we're going to do moving forward um, efficiencies within the business in the last month six weeks than we have done probably for the last six years we have we have a regular video conference on a monday wednesday and a friday morning which i've just come off before i joined you guys um, and we're, we're, we are plotting out the way forward and how this virus and everything going with it is going to change the way we operate to greater efficiencies, which has always been in the back of probably everyone's plans about how they will operate more efficiently. But they're so busy, um, as you say, Jeffrey, working uh, in the business rather than on it, mm. that it always gets pushed to the back of the queue. Now it's at the forefront of the queue because things like this Zoom meetings, um, go to meetings, whatever uh, method you might use, are now very much coming to the front. And clients are, are actually embracing it now because they know they have no choice. Whereas previously, and I, you know, we have clients across the country, I have clients in London and in the Northeast. I had to go and see them. I got on a train or got in the car and drove over to see them, and that was the day written off. Now it's video conference an hour hour and a half chatting about everything about the family about work everything the video conference finishes i carry on working it's wonderful and now at last they're embracing it it's just a real shame that something horrendous as this has to happen to make people embrace the the technology that we've always had for a long time yeah you see one of the things uh, amanda i think has got more experience i may be wrong here than all of us with regard to using the technology because i know you've been doing it something about 14 years is it amanda you, you something like that um so consequently this is in a way we're not preaching to the converted because mm. ed has been doing a similar thing again for about 14 years isn't it Ed? you've been around doing in business yeah yeah give or take yeah and consequently i know we've talked and you talk now to a lot more people using zoom platform or a similar platform uh, and certainly with your podcasts with sean that go out every week it is i've always been a believer in being proactive because you can't wait for people to come to you you have got to always keep at the forefront you know the late murray walker was the one who let's be honest years ago a mars a day helps you work western play that was his tagline when he started out in his marketing career working for a, what, mars because you know the mars company whoever whoever owns it now i don't know but i'll always remember that when he did his hill climbing with his dad and that's going back a few years but Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. I think we all know that. Mm. And you've got to keep that in the forefront all the time. I saw Amanda on LinkedIn the other day, put, you know, put out something with regard to one of her courses. It was on in the forefront in, so people could see it. <clears throat> and I, I know there are a lot of people who say, well, you can't keep writing to people. You can't keep bringing them up you can't keep doing this but if we can't we're not actually doing yeah i think um, going back to what wayne was saying um we do have to be very mindful of other people and how they're feeling right now um and a lot of people are in the fear mindset panicking reacting um i don't know what to do they're kind of and don't get me wrong i think we've all been in that situation right at the beginning you know we're all like oh god what this is this isn't new this, this is new this isn't um normal um i think but we do have to be very mindful um 
and selling isn't you know selling is something that we do naturally it's just that some people do it um very differently for example they're quite hard at selling they keep going when the person's saying no or whatever i think i've never been that kind of a salesperson but as you're saying you know right now people need our services um and if we don't put ourselves out there we're kind of doing them an injustice by not being there for them and even if you can maybe not sell anything or you know whatever even if it's just a coffee virtual coffee that you know that i've been talking about having that virtual coffee and just connecting with them and just telling them that it's okay what do you need how can i help you and and just be there to kind of serve without the expectation of them buying from you then i think that that this is my strategy anyway i think that is in this current circumstance um that's the best way forward because they still do need your service you know and every now and again i will still say to somebody okay well it sounds like you need to this with me or come on this course or you need to speak to so and so because this is where you are in your journey um and if we don't do that for people then they're never going to be able to move forward but we you know i'm very on board with what wayne was saying we've got to be very conscious of other people because their reality is very different from ours um, and if we don't tap into that we can be seen as insensitive sales hard selling people who don't really get them and, and don't really understand them so yeah. so just uh, picking back up there uh, mark you're talking about efficiencies i mean what would each of you suggest probably is some of the key efficiencies that we can take away or possibly that you might suggest to your clients at point in time i think it depends on which which clients you talk to from our own perspective and certainly from my perspective it's it's a time efficiency more than anything else um ever since i've been in practice i've i have fortunately always had enough work to do um there are days yesterday being one of them that i discovered that actually i felt as i was sinking because i had more emails i'm sure you all know what it's like you you get to your emails and you work your way through them and you think you rub your hands together and think marvelous i've got it down to one page and then some bugger comes along and fills the second page up for you and you're back to square one um but but that it's the efficiency of being able to work set the environment up to be able to work in a manner which allows you to get through as much as you conceivably can and then spend time with with clients i think as amanda, amanda said virtual coffees um chatting to clients seeing what seeing what their requirements are seeing how you can help them if you can help them even if it's just to put their mind at rest mm -hmm. um, and i've had numerous conversations with clients over the last couple of weeks um and and Oddly enough, one of them who was, it was an ex-client who I spoke to because I still stay in touch with him. And having chatted to him on Tuesday of this week, he's now returning to us as a client. Um, and it was purely down to that one conversation of how's it going, Graham? What are you up to? How, you know, how's life been treating you? And we got chatting and he said, you know what? I'd love to bring the business back to you. I think I will. And then he confirmed on Wednesday that he's bringing all his business back to me. And I was delighted, but it was simply, as Amanda said, it's a coffee. It's not hard sell. Mm. And I've never, I've, I can't do it. Never mind. I've never done it. I'm not capable of hard selling. I just can't do it. It's not in me. So it's just a chat. If mm. I can help you, I will. If I can't, I can't. But I'll give you the advice where I possibly can with the skills that I have. And that's the way I enjoy doing things. And I think that's where the efficiency come in, Wayne, because being able to, um, remove those those bits of of daily life which take up time and you really know that either you should be asking other people to do it for you or you really you really should find a more efficient way of doing it and this has really focused the mind on those areas um and i do feel as though i have more time in the day now without a shadow of a doubt more time in the day and I just have to try and keep going. And I'm nowhere near the end of, of efficiencies. I've just got to keep working on it. Yeah. What, what's your feelings, Edward, with regard to it? 
Um, what was that? Sorry, Jeffrey. My thoughts. What, what are your thoughts with regard to the way you're working at the moment? Because I know you're not down at the office as much as you used to, so you're missing your cycle rides. Yeah, I'm missing the commute a little bit. Um, and I'm missing the quiet roads. So really, I should be taking advantage of all the, the amazing space that's opened up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've kind of worked in reverse. I worked from home for five years and then kind of, I wasn't, I wasn't lonely, but I felt a little bit isolated and I missed, it, missed I felt like I was missing out on a bit of the social side of things. So I got an office first in Liverpool and now uh, for the last few years in Birkenhead down at Pacific Road. So I'm missing, I, I'm missing that little bit, the little group of uh, sharing office with three other guys, each with their own little business. So we're missing that a little bit. Um, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just fascinated at the moment by the, what's going on in the world. Um, like Amanda says, I'm, I'm trying to remember and I'm trying to be sensitive at all times to the, the misery and the, the pain that a lot of people are going through. Um, but a, another business that I set up last year, <clears throat> so I'm a, I'm a freelance designer by trade mainly. I've been for 12, 13 years, uh, graphics and web design. But last year I set up a, a community interest company um, called Rethink Now, which is, I was kind of came out of, me being a little bit obsessed with climate change and trying to figure out the path forward for that. Um, and I kept hearing this word rethink. So I called the company rethink. Um, and I'm hearing that word rethink even more now or whenever I see, you know, watching news nights or little news articles about what the future will hold. Cause I, I don't think the world will return to normal. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any way back to the world that, um, we had a month ago, two months ago, I think, we, I think we will create, hopefully, a better world. And uh, as part of that, there's the environmental side of things. Um, so I'm just, I'm just like in awe at the moment of what's going on and how fast we've, we've managed to change things. Because a lot of people within the climate change movement, campaigners, activists, and scientists, kind of, they, they don't, they know that we need to act fast, but they don't feel like we're capable of it. And we've just shown in the last few weeks yep. that we are. Um, so yeah I'm just fascinated really and I'm just kind of trying to soak it all up and take it all in my, my rethink business we actually had about 25 30 thousand pounds worth of events on the books and that all disappeared overnight because you can't really run events now so that but I'm still confident that that company the community company is in a very good place to to do well out of this crisis you know because we hopefully we can kind of lead the way and show the light and shine on the, the positive things that are happening at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm just all ears. <clears throat> I think one of the things that was said before, uh, and you certainly brought it up a moment ago, and that is you miss meeting other people. I think we all do. But the problem is, are we learning another way of meeting other people by what we've been forced into because of the lockdown, i.e. We're all, all right, we're all from around the area within 25 miles of, uh, of, of, of each other, but we're talking. And I think one of the things that's going to happen, or I feel is going to happen, is we're going to be utilizing this system or a system right into the future. This is the way I think a lot of businesses, other than obviously solid manufacturing businesses where you've got to create and work, etc., or a, a car mechanic, he can't work, you know, unless he's on the car. But what I'm saying is there are a lot of people now who can work. You know, one of my daughters uh, living in Lincolnshire, uh, she works for a Chinese company uh, on security, cyber security, and consequently, she is working from home, but they are now developing more people because of this, because they're able to work from home and they're understanding how to do it. So the office in Doncaster, where she travels to, they've all gone virtual. <clears throat> and from what I can gather from her, it's working very well indeed. Yeah. Do you think there's an element of the... the the human species as such um, reacts um, in moments of um, moments when things have to be done very, very quickly. I think, as you said, Edward, you know, the last couple of weeks have proved that um, humanity can react very, very quickly when it has to. But it needs to be pushed into the corner where there is really no alternative before they do it, because I think 
human species as a, as a generalism um, are rather apathetic towards change. Mm. And uh, perhaps mm-hmm. it's needed something like this. And, you know, catastrophic in terms of people losing their lives because of this, but it's needed something like this to make humanity actually realize that there are a number of factors taking place here. Firstly, there's a horrendous virus going around. Uh, it's as if Mother Nature's turned around and said, well, you're not listening to me. You're not listening to the, the, the squeals of the planet that you're damaging. So I'm going to teach you a lesson, um, which we have to try and find some way out that the planet and Mother Nature and humanity is able to, to deal with and, and find a different way of dealing with our daily lives. Even if it's only, I think as you said, Jeffrey, there will be some people that can't, but maybe 50% of the population can. And if you, you know, our, our son lives in Leeds and we spoke to him on Zoom at the weekend. And one of the comments he made was the quality, the air quality in Leeds now is incredible compared with what it was a month ago. Um, and it, it, it is, we, we need to find a different way to, to do our, run our daily lives. Um, and it was an interesting point that you made, Edward, about you miss the social interaction um, with people. Um, and I think that's one of the things that probably, over time, I think we probably would all miss to a point. Um, I, I went into the office on Wednesday because I needed to drop files off and collect a few files. And one of my managers was in the office as well. Um, and it was nice just to see her, have a chat, face-to-face, social distance, of course. Um, <laughs> but have a chat and, and just catch up with things. But if we could all change um, so that there was more working from home or, or a, a completely different way to approach things and then the occasional so, social interaction and perhaps uh, that is the way forward. I, I don't know. It certainly would work for me and it would, uh, I would certainly be feeling as though I'm actually doing something in favour of the planet as well. Yeah. One of the major concerns that I feel at the moment and I think it is going to touch all of us, is that there are going to be so many businesses that aren't going to be able to sustain the situation they're in at the moment. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there is going to be a tremendous amount of businesses go down. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there's going to be a lot of business owners who are going to need support. I've, I unfortunately have been in the position when I've lost a business and consequently I've seen the ramifications that take place. But the fact of the matter is you've got to, we, we in some way have got to try and reach out to a lot of business people that need that support because not many business people who work for themselves do like to ask for help because we're all individualists. Also, um, many business people are in a busyness and not in a business. I, you know, just to come back to a question earlier, you know, talking about efficiencies, what is your top tip or what are your top efficiencies? Mark certainly spoken about time before and then, you know, changing our environment. What we did before was not sustainable. What we're doing at the moment uh, in lockdown is not sustainable. There's got to be an in-between. There's got to be a middle ground. We've got to get back to work. We've got to be client-facing in some way, in some form. Now, if we think about that, we think about time efficiencies, we think about how do we possibly change our environment, and, and I mean environment in all senses, whether that's the, uh, the global environment, which we've seen have already been some, some huge impacts, over you know, many of your cities, uh, actually a lot of the pollution has gone right down. So there's that environment which is changing, but we've also got to change our environment, our working environment, whether that's at the office, our environment in which side in which we live, uh, is, it, uh, is it at home? What are your top tips that people can take away to go and change so that they can become stronger at the other side of this. 
You know, rather than being one of those people that go out of business, how can they change their business so that they can become stronger? Uh, and I think time is definitely one of them. I think um, time is one of these things that everybody, uh, I'm just going to say it, it, is an excuse. Um, people say I haven't got time when actually they're concentrating on the wrong things necessarily. Um, and time is something that people come to me all the time for because I, I haven't got time. Can you do my marketing? Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you update this? That, that? And, and I think my tip for efficiency with regards to, because efficiency is, is in, linked with time. I think the biggest tip is that you have to work out if you've not got enough time, you need to work out what you're doing. So it's about having clarity. It's about having clarity over, are you marketing or not? Are you selling or not? Do you need to work in your business or on your business? do you need to just take some time out? You know, and you know, one thing that I've realized, I don't know whether you guys have, I'm sleeping more. I need more sleep. Um, and it's, it's because not because I'm stressed, but the whole world, but everybody around us is stressed, stressed out. Um, and I think sometimes that reflects on you. You take in other people's energies and all of that kind of thing. So when uh, efficiency isn't just about pushing on, going through the hard times and keep, 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 keep um, doing it's about actually stopping and reflecting as well and stopping and saying to yourself, okay, well, if right now I can't work because I haven't got the mental space for it, I don't want to do it, I don't want to think about it, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful, worried, panicking about cash and all of this kind of stuff, then it might just be a, a better time for you to just stop. Um, sit in your garden, go and do some gardening if you've got one. Um, read a book if you haven't read a book for a while. Um, connect with friends, have Zoom calls, have, um, you know, m my friends and I, the girls, uh, we meet on uh, Zoom and we have like two or three hours and we're having like little cocktail parties and, and that kind of thing. So, mm. so we can still socialize and find out how each other are and all of that kind of stuff. But sometimes efficiency isn't just about pushing on and keep doing and making things streamlined. It's also about taking things back and reflecting and saying, okay, how do I want to come out of this? Do I want to come out with the same business? Because let's be honest, there are some business owners and you guys will have met these guys before. They hate what they're doing. They don't want to keep doing it. They want to do something different. They've always aspired to be better or, or in a different kind of industry. Now is the time to actually look at that and say to yourself, what is it that I want from my company? What is it that I want to do? Because we don't have time any other time apart from now. We are locked in. We have... Um, limited space and limited um, resources that we can or things that we can go in. so we, you know I hear that some people are saying I'm bored there's look come to my house there's loads to do here you know um, but my point is is that when it comes to efficiency efficiency is about clarity and when you understand and I mean crystal clear clarity when you understand what you need to do and how you need to do it right now could just be the time we just sit plan strategize work out a way forward have those connections speak to people to help you make the right decisions because what i'm also finding is that people who are in this panic kind of um fear kind of um mental state you can't make a good decision you can't make a good decision when you're in that kind of mindset you have to be in a calm mindset to be able to move forward the way in which you want to do it so i think that's my biggest tip um, just think if you, out, so that might be what you need instead of just keep pushing on because everybody's telling you you should you should be doing this you should be doing that do what you think that you need to do and that could just be looking after yourself and doing some yoga meditating whatever it is whatever floats you about and just taking some time up mm, there's a few interesting things you said there you know uh, just the, the first one you spoke you said people say they don't have time for their marketing and that actually really ties in with the efficiency, right? Um, is it marketing? Is it doing your taxes? You know, your, your, your general books? Doesn't matter. That's right. And it's about becoming aware and becoming more efficient and say, look, as I mentioned before, you know, Mark's my accountant and I like to do my, uh, my, my normal bookkeeping and that, and I pass over to Mark and then to do the final accounts, et cetera. Only because that then gives me a good idea. Where am I? What money's coming in? What money's going out? What do I need to chase, et cetera, rather than waiting 
you know, to the end of the year to actually do that. But that's part of my strategy. And that's not necessarily right for everybody. No. And at the same time, I'm not the best at doing my marketing. So let me rather give to somebody else what they are good at doing. So it frees me up with the time to do what I'm good at doing. So there's three particular tools that I normally speak to my clients about. And uh, the first one is the default diary. And so we break our, our day down. Uh, I use just half hour increments, uh, love him or hate him, Donald Trump, you know, I think before he was president, his, his was seven minute increments. But the, every seven minutes or every 15 or every 30 minutes, whatever you break down into uh, throughout your day, everything has its place. So it's a default diary, meaning the things that have to happen by default, they go in the diary, Monday through to Sunday. Example, let's say five to six was our dinner time every night. That's in the diary because that, that's got to happen, right? If I had a sales meeting eight till nine on a Monday morning, that goes in the diary. Every appointment goes in the diary. If I've got uh, to record five videos this week, they each have their slot in the diary. What's amazing is that there's so much time in between that this comes to this busyness rather than business. You know, people, uh, they'll, especially when they work from home, it's like a Monday morning, go drop the kids off at school. And I usually take this much longer, so I'm going to condense it. But they go drop the kids off at school. They come back and they go, oh, that was such a hard work. You know, I better just have a coffee, chill out. Oh, I better get some of the washing on over the weekend. I can't work now because the washing machine's making a noise. So I might as well do the hoovering as well. And they've gone through the whole day and they've not done any work, not spent any quality time on the work. On the, on the job, you know, on the business. So it's about becoming clear on where do we spend our time? And that takes me into the next two, which is where do we spend our time? How much time do I spend on marketing? How much time do I spend on watching TV, sleeping, driving to work, whatever that might be? And that's going to be different every day. Some people say they don't have time to study, but they spend two hours in their car driving to work and back. Well, then the car could be a mobile library. They, uh, you know, the average American, and I dare say this is true for many people, watch around four hours TV per day. Now, four hours TV is not difficult. Uh, I mean, I'm being kind at the moment. It's not difficult if you think they watch between six till 10 at night. And on the weekends, you know, maybe they watch even more because they're watching sports and, and whatever the case might be. What is four hours TV by the time you sort of 65, whatever, equates to nine to 10 years of your life. Malcolm Gladwell said in the book Outliers, he said it takes about 10,000 hours to become an expert in any field. I'm not saying don't watch TV. I enjoy a good documentary as much as the next guy. But it's about where am I spending the time? If I'm spending four hours watching TV, but I say I don't have time to go to the gym and take care of my health, well, there's a problem, right? So where am I spending my time? And then, you know, the other one is finding out all of these activities then that we think we have to do uh, ties in our and delegate. Yeah, do ties in with uh, if you've ever uh, read the book uh, Eat Your Frog, uh, you know, Eat Your Frog first thing in the morning. If it's a job I have to do. And the worst thing I possibly need to do that day, because nobody wants to eat a frog, right? Certainly not a raw, slimy, squishy one. But if I had to do that, i.e. that's the task I absolutely do not want to do, do that first in the morning because the rest of the day can only get better. So if I'm going to do that, do that first. Now everything else, like I said, the day becomes easier. It's if I don't do it first and I want to leave it till tonight, by tonight I'll make every excuse why I don't have to do it. Then it gets put over till tomorrow and the day after. And then we start procrastinating. Procrastination, you know, some people think, oh, if they leave everything till the end, they do better because they work better under pressure. And by, by default, that's not true. You know, we can cope under pressure, but we don't do our best work under pressure. It doesn't give us that time to reflect and to think and to change. Mm. So do it. 
In fact, the two, the, the two minute or the one touch rule, if I can do it, if it comes across my desk and I can do it within the next two to five minutes and I've got to touch it because it is mine to do, then I do it and it's done. Otherwise, it becomes paper shuffling and people shuffle those papers and by the end of the week, they've actually not done anything and they just move paper to paper to paper to paper to, to different aspects, right? So do it. If it's really not mine to do, delete it. If I've got to do it, but I don't need to do it right now, then maybe I'll defer it till later, like you know, booking the family holiday. Yeah, it's important. We want to get it done, but I don't have to do it between my working hours. So do that tonight while you're watching your four hours TV. So defer it, but make sure then that it becomes the one touch rule and delegate. But in that delegation is a, is a fine line between delegating and abdicating. I think very uh, often as business owners, you know, there, there's this, uh, this idea of only we can do it as, as good as it needs to be, right? Uh, I think sometimes people struggle to delegate and that's when they start to micromanage or on the other side, they totally abdicate. They abdicate responsibility and they go, at the end of the day, is the business owner, the buck stops with you. I give my accounts to Mark. I say, hey, Mark, yeah, you go, guys. And, and they get it done. But if, if it doesn't get filed, HMRC comes to me. They don't go, hey, Mark, why didn't you guys sort out Wayne's accounts? No, it's, I can't abdicate. I subcontract it out. I, I, I delegate it. But the buck stops with me. But if I want to go, let's say it was somebody working for me and I want to crop cross every T and dot every I and really micromanage what they did, well, then I, I take all their power away. If I don't empower them to, to do the work that I give them, they're not going to do it anyway because they learn over time that, oh, well, you're just going to check, you're going to double check, you're going to negate what I did, etc. Well, then you might have just done it your, <laughs> yourself in the first place. So that art of delegating, I think, is really important. So it's do, delete, delegate, and defer. But thinking those four things, uh, and I think it was, um, I think it was Churchill, this actually, that came up with this idea. You ask, how important is it and how urgent is it? And you give a score from one to five. And so you essentially have this quadrant. Important, but not urgent, urgent, not important, not urgent, not important, and urgent and important. And placing each of these things in there and then deciding, okay, what is, because if it's not urgent, it's not important, we'll probably bin it. But if it's urgent and not important, well, that's usually two reasons. Could be something I couldn't foresee, but on the other hand, it could just be because I didn't plan properly. The best place to be spending our time is doing the things that are important, but not necessarily urgent. We don't want them to become urgent. That's where we're spending our time to really achieve the goals and the outcomes that we want to achieve. So I think this whole idea of time is extremely important. And then delegate, like I said, or subcontracting out you know, to people like yourselves, things that you are great at. I'm not a great accountant. That's why I have a fabulous accountant. I'm not great at marketing. Uh, it's, you know, can I do it? Yeah, but rather give it to somebody else to do. So we each have those, uh, those resources and those abilities that we have. But I think you're very, very right there, Amanda, is it's time to, to take stock and see what works for each one of us. And then becoming very clear on that action plan. So I think that's, that's probably one of the, my takeaways or if I, uh, one of my suggestions is become very, very clear on your plan. What is the outcome? If your why is big enough, you'll find a way. But if your why is flaky, you'll find an excuse every day. So what is your reason for doing your business? Becoming clear on it. Does it support you? Is it, uh, does it fill your cup or empty your cup? And then time management. Uh, so, my rent, uh, but what, what, what do the rest of you suggest? What else? What else can people take away from this? I think um, there's a couple more things as well, because you've mentioned procrastination. Um, and I think Ed might get onto this because you're a designer. Um, I can't remember the book, but I read a book ages ago on creativity, um, because a lot of people also think that when it comes to marketing, they have to be creative. 
And you don't necessarily have to be creative to market. You just need to have the idea um, and the gumption to move forward with it. But the book um, talks about procrastination. If I remember it, I'll, I'll tell you what it is, but um, it's off the top of my head at the moment. But it talks about procrastination because procrast procrastination is good in certain times. So, for example, as a graphic designer or a web designer, procrastination is needed because when you create something and you're not sure whether it's right or not, you know, especially when you're designing graphics and things, you have to give it time to what I call percolate. You've got to let it do the thing that it needs to do. So the procrastination isn't about um, isn't about uh, putting something off. It's about giving the thing that you're doing the time to become more mature, more mature and make sure that actually that's the right step um, in which you can, is that the right way forward? Shall I be moving forward with this or is it not quite right? So sometimes procrastination is good um, because we need that time to just let ideas percolate and things just come to us um, when we have the space for it to do so. There's another book called um, Indistractable. I don't know whether you've read it, but Indistractable is, is about stop with the shiny object syndrome. You know, when you're working with your desk, you've got your phone, you've got somebody walking in the office or whatever. Um, and Indistractable is about you being indistractable. And how do you make sure that notifications, emails and things that are happening aren't, aren't taking you away from you know your time bound things and one of the things that he talks about is you know your default diary one of the things he talks about is the same kind of thing but actually you plan in personal stuff as well and when he was writing this book uh, somebody turned around and said you can't you can't put your kids into your diary and he was like i can and let me tell you why and when he when he mentioned all of this it was like this is brilliant um, because sometimes I remember my mum used to say to me, oh, do I, do I have to diarise an appointment or get lunch with you? And I'm like, well, yeah, because I've got stuff to do. And it's not that I don't want to do it. It's because I want to make sure that I'm spending quality time with you. So when you're creating that default diary and becoming indistractable, you're allowing time for procrastination. You're allowing time for doing your accounts, doing your marketing updating your website whatever it is but you're also allowing time for your family and saying to your wife or your husband tonight's date night we start at seven and then we finish at midnight or whatever this is what we're doing and you only have time for that thing or that person that's in your diary so you you're not distracted because you're giving everything else time um throughout the day and i thought that that was quite a cool a cool thing to I add i totally in. agree with you on uh, on putting that time in you know, as, as an example, over the last few months, I spent three hours a day doing jiu-jitsu and kickboxing. And those are in my default diary. I spend an hour and a half in the morning and an hour and a half in the evening. Uh, and, and that's absolutely right. I, I think the, uh, the key there, what you were describing, is not procrastination. You know, I like that idea of it's percolating. You're deliberately giving time for that, uh, that creative juices to actually flow. There's a distinction there in whether it's actually procrastinating and I'm just not getting done what I know I need to get done and I'm deliberately putting it off compared to or versus you know, it's something that I need to do, but it's still busy. I'm mulling it over. And so a great example of that might be uh, the late, great Milton Erickson, who was uh, a renowned uh, hypnotherapist. In fact, he probably brought hypnosis out of the dark ages you know and off stage into uh, you know, being what it is today and very often you know he might see 10 12 clients a day but you might have to wait for weeks before you could actually get your seat so the client would call up and you know, he would have this first interview sort of or chat on the phone and say okay well what is it you're coming to see me with and he would just let that percolate and sit there with them so that by the time the client actually came to see him, he already had a number of metaphors. Uh, it was one of the ways he did therapy and, and hypnosis as well was through metaphors. And he would just let it sit there and mull it over. And I think that that's the key difference between, as you say, percolating, which I love that, mm -hmm. uh, rather than procrastinating. One of the things I think we ought to think about as well, all of us are visionaries in one respect or another. Without the vision, none of us would have been in the businesses we're in. 
and consequently vision has got to i think come into our exit strategy from covid19 so if we can visualize where we want to be over the next 12 months because i think this is only going to be a short period of time 12 months i think this is going to go on for a lot longer but if we can put ideas down use our visions use our ideas that we've got of things that we would have liked to have done in the past and as amanda said ruminate on them what we need to look at is what can i do now that is going to see me to the end of 2020 you know and i think that is something we need to start thinking about we talk about diarizing it down default diaries we talk about many many ways which i totally agree with i use a crm and i've got my first 15 minutes of the day at eight o'clock doing my exercise and since i've actually put that down onto my crm and it pops up on my phone it reminds me ah i've got to do my exercises now that to me is an important thing it's a kickstart to the day following on from amanda where as you mentioned sleeping i am sleeping a lot better i've got to be honest with you because as a, i'm getting a lot of the, the the baggage off my shoulders i'm cleaning my business myself up and my business up there's a couple of people in you know uh, wayne and, Ma, and and ed know that i'm tidying all of my if you like the last 15 to 20 years of my computer with regard to all the lectures the talks the workshops and everything the 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 the, the, the networking and I'm cleaning the computer completely and itemizing it because I've taken this opportunity and I'm, I am saying to you, in some respects, COVID-19 to me has been an opportunity to look at myself. And I don't know whether anybody else feels that. It would be interesting to, to pose that question. Do you think the COVID-19 has given you an opportunity where you can use your visions to move forward. I think it's from from my perspective and from my business's perspective. It's uh, it touches on something that we they mentioned a little bit earlier, which is yes, it's given us the opportunity to look forward, and it's it's just given us that little bit of a kick to make us look forward maybe sooner than we would perhaps have done because we now appreciate that that we need to get things done sooner rather than later to you know we, we look at things now and we're saying well okay the software that we currently use which is which is sage which you're probably all familiar with um in terms of the software that we use in-house for Sage, is predominantly server-based, mm. which in these circumstances is a damn nuisance to be perfectly honest. And we have talked for months and months about looking at cloud-based software. That's now triggered us to really a concerted effort to do so. But that in itself has come back to, I think something that you said before, Amanda, which is, giving yourself time to reflect on, on matters. And that's certainly something that I have tried to do in the past. I've succeeded to an extent. And now I make even more of an effort to set time aside in a day to reflect on what I've done and what I need to do. It then moves into prioritizing, which I know is something that you've mentioned, Wayne. And actually setting out what I need to do over the coming days so that I don't get into the, it's important and urgent. It's important that what, that's what gets done first. And really only concentrate on doing things that I know I'm good at. And the bits that yes. um, come across my desk, which I am not and never will be an expert in, I will go to other people now and ask them to help in those areas, whether that be marketing, whether it be 
um, I, I don't know other areas of, of business life. But I think that that is where we see ourselves moving forward. It has made us think and it's made us think and react maybe a bit more quickly than perhaps we as accountants being old fashioned and boring um, would perhaps have acted in the past. Yeah, now we're just running up towards the hour now and I know we want to try and keep it within the hour. So does anybody want to, excuse the pun, wrap up themselves in a conclusion, each one of us? Um, I was going to say, um, off what Mark was saying there, um, has everybody heard of David Goggins? Mm. Mm, Wayne, you should have. <laughs> Ex army. Um, but David Goggins is an uh, American Marine and he's, he's um, achieved loads of stuff that nobody else has done in um, his thing. Um, and my business coach actually sent me a video or sent our team, because we're in a mastermind, sent the team a video. And one of the videos uh, that he sent was about David Goggins, who was talking about how he was able to do the stuff in the time when nobody else could do it. Um, and he said, it's not just mindset, but it's also, um, in his words, was tripling down on my weakness. Um, and I'm, t I'm t taking this because, Mark, you were talking about um, what your strengths are. And you, I've written mm -hmm. down here, um, do the things that I know that I'm good at. But actually, um, one of the things that I took from that video is actually concentrate on things that I'm not so good at. I know that I'm good at marketing, I'm not so great at numbers. So what do I need to do with my accountant? And ringing Lucy and saying, right, okay, how do I do this? How do I do this? We use zero. Um, and one of the things that he was saying was triple down on your weakness. And it was like, ah, okay. So that's going to take me so far out of my comfort zone. Um, it's untrue because numbers and we, me and numbers just don't get on. We don't like each other. They don't like me. I'm not keen on them. Um, but actually, if I triple down on my weaknesses, my strengths will always get better because that's what I'm good at. But if we look at the weakness, Wayne was saying, I'm not so good at marketing. So what can I do to help? Who can help me? Who can, who can I talk to? And I think, you know, if people have a look at their weaknesses um, and say, okay, and, and, and just acknowledge the fact that number one, I'm not so good at this. Uh, if I got better at this, how would my business or my, my life be better because I'm looking at this thing? Um, and also, even though that, that might not make you as effective in the subject of today, um, in the, in initially, in the long run, you'll be a lot more sub um, effective because you're actually outside of your comfort zone for so long. Mm. Yeah. than you would have done before yeah. so I think well, that's what I'm going to leave you guys with today one of the things that I uh, always do before I take a new mentor on or a new client on uh, is basically ask them to fill in a SWOT analysis strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats and I email this pro forma out to them but I ask them to be one 100% honest with themselves and don't fudge it. I don't know whether, whether anybody else uses a SWOT analysis when they're dealing with things, but sometimes, every now and again, it's a good thing to do it on ourselves. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, then. Len, you've been extremely quiet and jumping up and down. I know your computer's yeah. on the blink and you've had to use your phone. Um, well, would, you, you, would you like to say something before we pack up? Yeah, it wasn't just that. I had uh, my washing machine packed in as well. <laughs> so as soon as I came on screen, the bloody washing machine guy came and knocked on the door. So I had to be down and let him in. And uh, he's thankfully sick now. So... Yeah, apologies to everybody for coming in late and, and so on. But yeah, just to sum up my from my point of view, I agree with most of what Wayne and, and the others have said. Um, I think I, I made a point, I think on our last meeting, I, I used to always abide by the, um, um, you know, working on your business and working in your business 50% each way. But uh, later on in life, I started doing the three things in your business, on your business, and outside your business. 
and outside your business can be either spending time with your family or going to the gym or meeting up with other business people for a friendly chat and a pint. Um, so I think, yeah, all the points that have been made are all good, valid points. And uh, it, it comes down again, what, what Wayne was saying. If you look at, this is an old, an old piece of paper that I picked up today, but on the top it's got action, not important, not urgent. And that, the, the thing that uh, Wayne mentioned before, I've used that many times in the past with different, you know, action, urgent, action, not urgent, important, not important, and so on. And I think it, at the end of the day, it all comes down to planning. Um, I've shown you my diary before. My diary is colour-coded. Um, at the bottom of my diary, there's a list of things to do every week, and I either tick them off as I do them. You know, the, the topic's got the important things. Uh, it, it actually says on the top of my thing there, um, you know, things like client emails or whatever. Um, but it's the key task. I've got it in red, you know, on the top there, key task. And every day there's a key task. And I make sure that key task is done. And that's the first thing I do every day. And then I start knocking off the other things that are on the bottom pages and work through them. And uh, I think, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's all about planning at the end of the day, isn't it? It's about planning it and, yeah. and going back to the traveling and, and the, I think we've all realised now that I think um, terrible at names, but uh, what's his name? The accountant there was saying about oh. not working. Mark saying about not. Working. You know, the last meeting, Mark, you mentioned about not working from your office now. Yes. I mean, I've, I've written two books, and when I met my book mentor, I literally met her face to face once, and because she lives in Glossop, which is a good hour's drive from me and a pain in the ass to get to. We just started having Skype meetings every every week, you know, once a week. So I've been, I've been doing that for two years now. And, um, you know, she came to my book launch, but that's the only time I've seen her, face to face. Um, and it saved me a hell of a lot of time and a hell of a lot of money in, in fuel and whatnot. And I think now that when we come out of this, there'll be a lot more people realising what they can do from home. I mean, I'm a big believer in face to face, as I think everybody knows. Um, and I do like meeting people face to face before I deal with them. But once you've done that, you know, there's, why not have a Skype meeting instead of shooting off to London to meet somebody for a couple of hours, which I've done in the past, like most people. So I think that's what we can take from it. It's, you know, prioritise what you're doing, plan it out every week, you know, take it forward to next week, plan it out what you're going to do every day and stick to it. So that's, that's my view on it anyway well done well look i think uh we'll be pulling it to a close now i hope everybody has gained one little item gem from what we've been talking about 